Young Justice has always been a show that deals with mature themes, even more so since it moved to be a streaming show in season 3. But even before then, the show has some pretty dark moments, such as the villains trying to stop a small girl from getting a heart transplant, or Black Beetle casually stabbing Ray al Ghul to death. But that is just the tip of the iceberg, and this video is going to count down the 5 darkest moments in Young Justice. Vandal Savage's Daughter Vandal Savage may be the head villain, but usually, even villains don't kill their own children. There are a few exceptions to this rule, though not many, but after it's made clear that his daughter can no longer keep Vandal's plans a secret due to her aging mind, he snaps her neck and kills her. Vandal Savage. <laughs> it defines who... Of course, she was going senile, and it could be argued that it was a mercy, if not for the fact that she wasn't completely gone and could easily have been put in a care home, even if it had to be a special villain care home so that she wouldn't reveal any secrets. But in truth, he didn't kill her for any reason other than she could no longer keep a secret. She was no longer of any use to him and had become a liability, and therefore a threat to his plans. And if you're a threat to Vandal Savage's plans, then no matter who you are, he will just dispose of you. But still, killing your own daughter like this is brutal beyond words. He clearly loves her, but he gets rid of her the second he realises that she is of no use to him, with no hesitation and without so much as a goodbye. And the fact that Savage can turn his emotions off so totally like this is insane. And he does have emotions. He may be a villain, yes, but even villains have emotions and he clearly cares for his daughter. But what's even worse than this is knowing that this isn't the first of his daughters that he's killed. The casualness with which Vandal snapped her neck shows us that he has done this before, and this is just the final point of his children's life cycles. Clearly over the thousands of years that he's been alive, he's had children, and these children are born, he moulds them so he can use them, and then he uses them in whatever plans he has until they grow so old they are no longer of use, and then he gets rid of them. And he must have done this to literally thousands of his children, and that is a very dark thing to think about. Now it is an efficient and intelligent system, true, but as anyone who's been in love will tell you, love is not efficient and it's not intelligent. It's the exact opposite. We do things for those that we love that we shouldn't do and that we would never normally do if not for the fact that we did love them. That's why we treat loved ones so different to others. But Vandal shows us that if you're in his way, then friend or foe, he'll treat you the same, which is to say he will show no mercy. And this scene, more so than anything else in Young Justice, shows us just how cold and calculating Vandal Savage is. Miss Martian's Mind Rapes Miss Martian, like all Martians, is a telepath, but she is an exceptionally powerful telepath. In fact, Martian Manhunter has said that she is the most powerful mind that he has ever encountered. Now, she's a hero, so that's obviously a good thing. The problem is that she is far too liberal with her psychic powers and she mind rapes the bad guys whenever she wants, ripping information out of them and leaving them as catatonic vegetables, who will spend years of their lives, if not the rest of their lives, only able to sit in the corner and drool. She did the same thing to the psychic Simon, though not for heroic reasons. Instead of getting some sort of information out of him to help save the day, she broke his mind so he couldn't reveal her true form to her teammates, because her true form as a Martian is quite ugly. So Simon spent five years in a coma because she was having vanity issues. Imagine if a teenage girl put you in a coma just because you'd seen her without her makeup on, because that's exactly what Miss Martian did. And it is seriously messed up when you think about it. And really, Miss Martian should be put in prison for this because that is an incredibly evil and violent act. Now, you may think that since she does this to the bad guys, that it's all okay. After all, they're the villains, so why shouldn't they suffer? But I would disagree because I think making someone a vegetable is always wrong, regardless of who it is. But even if you do think it's okay to do this to villains, Miss Martian also does this to the good guys. In fact, she mind rapes her boyfriend Superboy. The two of them have a fight, so she decides to go into his mind and rewrite his memories, to make him forget the fight and why Superboy was angry with her, and make him go back to being happy with her. Fortunately, Superboy was able to feel her in his mind and stopped her from doing this but it's still insanely messed up. I mean, we've all had fights with loved ones and friends, but you can't just go in their mind and change the way they think because, well, it's just a violation that we don't even have words for. Connor, I'm so sorry about that. Sorry you did it, or sorry you got caught. 
Now, Miss Martian does eventually learn her lesson when she breaks Aqualad's mind, as she believes that Aqualad murdered Artemis, though while she's breaking his mind, she discovers that they actually faked Artemis' death and that she's actually turned to one of her oldest friends, brain dead. Breaking a mind is easy. Restoring one may not even be possible. True, she did end up fixing his mind, and in doing so, she learnt the error of her ways and went down a better path. And all it took was scarring the love of her life forever and turning a good friend mentally handicapped. Speedy. Speedy was Green Arrow's original sidekick, but not the one we know as Red Arrow. The real Speedy was named Roy Harper and he was abducted on a mission with Green Arrow. He then had his arm cut off by the bad guys so they could use it in human cloning experiments. And then the rest of his body was put into cryogenic stasis. They then cloned him and sent that clone out to replace him and to report on the Justice League for them. And that clone is the one that we know in the show that went on to be Red Arrow. And the original Roy Harper ended up being stuck in storage for eight years, eventually being rescued by his own clone, whom had found out about the whole thing and felt guilty for even existing. Roy then awoke to find eight years of his life was missing, along with his right arm. Plus, someone else had been living his life all this time, so no one even knew he was gone. So understandably, he was pretty angry about the whole thing. You've both been talking around it all day. Now I want answers. What happened to me? How can there be another Roy Harper? And what happened to my arm? Now this concept alone is one of the darker ones in DC animation. In fact, Speedy suffers more than any other animated sidekick next to Robin in the Batman Beyond film. Though he reacted like most people would, which is to want revenge and he set out to kill Lex Luthor to get payback, as he was the man responsible for all of this. Though ultimately, he lets Luthor escape in exchange for a robotic arm. What is it you really want, son? Revenge or satisfaction? And Roy Harper also has some pretty bad PTSD and spends all his time angry and scared, lashing out at others and putting others in danger in order to protect himself from ever being recaptured by the bad guys. At one point, he actually ensures that the whole team get captured by the Reach when he blows an airlock so that he alone could escape. A pretty selfish thing to do, and not exactly very heroic. Last thing I remember is you blowing an airlock without warning. Nearly got us all killed and absolutely guaranteed our capture. There is also a lot of survivor's guilt from the clone of Roy Harper. As I said, he feels guilty for just existing. Not to mention the fact that he has been mind controlled and betraying the Justice League for years. And when he finds all this out and then can't find the original Roy Harper, it tears him apart quite a bit and destroys his life, sending him down a dark path. And all of this is a very mature narrative and very disturbing to watch. It's also one of the rare occasions where we see heroes actually affected by the messed up stuff that the villains do to them. I mean, villains do horrible stuff to the heroes all the time, but usually we just skip most of the grief or just gloss over it. But Young Justice has never been scared to tackle the issue, or at least call attention to it. They don't focus on it too much or go too in-depth. After all, this is still a superhero show that kids can watch. Metahuman Trafficking In Season 3, Metahuman Trafficking is the main plot point. Now, this involves abducting humans, most of whom are children, and experimenting on them to see if their metagene can be activated. Now, a lot of kids do get powers, but a lot more end up dead. Not to mention the fact that the ones who survive this process end up going into slavery, committing horrific acts until the day they die, half the time killed in action by heroes or villains, or in some cases, just killed by the bad guys because they've become a liability, and killing them is quicker than rescuing them. Fail safe Omega! Da! No! No! <laughs> Now, we don't have an exact figure of how many die, but it must be in the thousands, and it's quite likely higher than that. Now, this actual metahuman trafficking is without a doubt the darkest aspect of the show. As I said, they're abducting children, experimenting on them till they die, or if they survive, putting them as mind control slaves till they die. That is insanely dark, but it's presented as just a matter of fact part of the plot for the most part. And we can't really relate to it because we don't really see that much of a human face. As in, we don't see the human beings actually suffer that much. I mean, the ones who look like humans are usually saved by the good guys. It's really the ones who look like freaks or have been mutated into monsters that end up being killed. And it's hard to relate to these, because unless we see a human suffering, we don't really care. It's sad, but it's true. If it was a cute animal, yeah, we'd care. But monsters? Not so much. After all, this scene is a child dying, a 14-year-old girl. 
but it looks like a monster dying, which means it doesn't really affect us in quite the same way. Don't get me wrong, we still care of course, but it's not as heartbreaking. And it's obviously why the writers chose to do it this way, deliberately making sure they show the darkness and evil of what's happening, but not showing it with humans so it doesn't become too dark that it alienates the audience. No one likes watching children die after all, but monsters? Well, that's not quite so bad. And as I said, the killing isn't really the worst part. After all, the ones who survive are sold into slavery and forced to go around murdering people and committing genocide. I mean, that's pretty messed up. And even though we gloss over all of these darker details for the most part, there are still plenty of depraved elements shown throughout the series about this story arc of metahuman trafficking. Ocean Master Murdering Children Now Ocean Master hasn't really featured in the show that much. He actually features more in the Young Justice comic book series, and in that series he is disgraced and imprisoned by the heroes of the world. And the whole ordeal of going from being a prince to being someone kept in a prison for years sends him a bit mental, and he has become an evil despot with nothing left to lose. And there's nothing more dangerous than someone who has nothing left to lose. And so he decides to hurt the heroes in the worst way he can, by murdering all of their children, who regularly gather together for a play date. Now killing all these children is a plan the Light have in play. It's known as the nuclear option, because they know it will hurt the heroes more than anything. But doing it will also guarantee mutually assured destruction, because if they push the heroes this far, the heroes will lash out against the villains like never before. And needless to say, the Light doesn't want this, so they send Lady Shiva to stop Ocean Master. And she does this by beheading him. There are a few times in superhero animation where chopping someone's head off is not only the right thing to do, but also saves as many lives as this beheading does. And I don't just mean the lives of the children, because if these children are gone, then their parents will never be the same. Some of them may stop being heroes, some may just be less effective heroes, and some of them will go on killing rampages, killing as many villains as possible. So beheading Ocean Master is definitely the best thing that could be done. True, he could be stopped, but if you reach the point where you'll murder a dozen small children in cold blood, you're not going to be stopped by a simple deterrent. He'd try this again and again until he succeeded, or until he could achieve a goal just as depraved. So really, there was no course of action other than killing Ocean Master. Though admittedly, they aren't doing this for any noble reasons. The Light and Lady Shiva may have stopped Ocean Master, but they only really stop him because he'll interfere with their own plans. In truth, the Light has no problem killing children when it suits them, as their child meta-trafficking ring has clearly shown. So they only stop him for selfish reasons, nothing else. But I think you'll agree, attempting to kill a dozen or so young children, all of whom are related to the stars of the show, is a very dark moment, and quite possibly the darkest moment in the Young Justice show. Especially with the way the body of Ocean Master is gone so quickly, and the heroes are none the wiser to the events, showing how close they came to death and that they could be killed at any given moment should the villains choose. It's all rather chilling, because the heroes are supposed to keep the world safe, and yet, in truth, they can't even protect their children. Which makes you wonder how effective these heroes really are. And that is the five darkest moments in Young Justice. I can't really say which one of these is my favourite, because quite frankly I love all of them. But please feel free to let us know in the comments which is your favourite, and if there are any other dark moments that you think should have been mentioned in this video. And I'd just like to quickly say that I've gotten quite a few requests lately for merchandise from the Needle Mouse channel. Now, I've never actually got around to making any because, quite frankly, I didn't think anyone would be interested. But since people have been asking, I've set up some clothing lines which you can buy with the Needle Mouse logo, a link to which is in this video's description. And I'd also like to say a quick thank you to those who made this video possible by donating to the Needle Mouse Productions page on Patreon. And as always, thanks for watching, and feel free to subscribe, share, like and comment.